All right, everybody, welcome back to another video. If you've ever wondered, why should I build a kegerator when I can just buy one? And is that decision actually something that makes sense for me? Well, you've come to the right place because we're going to go ahead and talk about that subject here today. So this is the new air 5.8 cubic foot single tap standalone kegerator. So what is my relationship with new air? Well, they reached out to me a couple months back and asked me if they could send me a beer can fridge. Um, I politely declined saying that's not really relevant to me uh, or my channel, but a few weeks later they came back to me with a counter offer and they said hey we see that your channel is oriented towards small spaces we have these small kegerators they'd like you to try and uh, see what you think about them I decided that made more sense for the channel's audience so here we have this today uh, we're gonna compare this to my four tap seven cubic foot kegerator that you all know uh, from my videos and I built a couple years ago so new air sent me this product free of charge um, and there's honestly no other compensation involved. I was not asked to specifically say anything or not say anything, so that's all good there. Companies always take a risk when they send me equipment because they never know what I'm gonna say about it. Um, and I've had this for a little while, so I've had some time to think about what do I really like about it, what don't I like about it. And we're gonna discuss all of those things today, uh, but I think the most important topic to focus on today is does it even make sense to buy an outright pre-made, pre-designed kegerator when you can more affordably make one yourself? I have had a four tap, seven cubic foot kegerator that I've enjoyed for many years. Um, I made it myself. It took uh, a decent amount of effort and it was about a thousand dollar investment. Um, and there's definitely a lot of upgrades I could have made to that that are present in this kegerator here. However, this one carries about a $1,200 price tag. So is it worth it and why? As far as the kegerator itself, it's a nice sleek black design. Um, I was able to use some chalkboard pens to, uh, to write on it. Um, and that seems to actually work pretty well with the material they put on the surface here. The footprint is pretty small. It's about 24 by 24 by 35 inches on dimensions, but the CO2 tank holder is in the very back of the fridge. Uh, so it does stick out the back like by another like six or eight inches or so, uh, depending on how you have it oriented. So just be aware of that if you're trying to fit this in one place. Uh, it comes with a draft tower configuration with a single tap draft tower. However, these are very easy to interchange out with two, three, and even four tap configurations. Or if you turn it into a T-tower, you can put a whole bunch more in horizontally. On the front of the kegerator, there's also a very nice digital temperature display, uh, which is actually really handy for just quick adjustments or uh, just quickly seeing what the temperature is instead of ha hooking up like an inkbird controller to everything. Moving inside the kegerator, we have space uh, naturally for three five gallon corny kegs. Even though I use the torpedo slimline kegs, you could still very easily fit three standard sized corny kegs in here with no problem. Uh, there's also several shelves that come with the kegerator. I took all of those out just to fit all the kegs in there. But if you wanna store stuff like hops or yeast in here at the same time as your kegs, it's very easy to do so as well. In the back, there's also a fan to help regulate the humidity inside. Uh, it turns on and off automatically, and I haven't really had any issues with humidity building up in here. In the upper right corner, there's also pass-through locations for two CO2 lines. So if you wanna run a CO2 tank as well as a nitrogen tank, it's very easy to run both of those lines simultaneously through your kegerator. A couple things about the draft tower. First of all, this does not come with a Perlick tab. It comes with a standard faucet on it. Uh, so I replaced that with a Perlick tab just because that's what I have and what I prefer um, for my lines and it fits just fine. The fridge also comes with a caster kit so you can throw those on there and wheel this thing around as you need to. This kit comes with pretty much everything you need to hook it up to a Sankey keg right away, uh, including the CO2 tank, which is actually pretty impressive. So if you end up getting the kegerator, just grab the CO2 tank, roll down to your local homebrew shop, uh, swap it out for a fresh CO2 tank, or just go down to your local gas store if you have one of those near you, um, and uh, fill it up there. And that should be all that you have to do in order to get this thing going. Uh, it comes with every piece of hardware you'd otherwise need, and uh, plenty of extras as well. Uh, setup didn't take too long. I had this thing up and running in about an hour. Um, the worst part about it probably was actually the instruction manual, which was really hard to follow in general. I found it lacking in diagrams and it seemed like it was kind of a blanket instruction manual for multiple models of kegerators, which doesn't really cover the individual differences between some of them. A couple other things that I noticed, the tolerances uh, as to where the pilot holes are for screws are not good. A lot of those were off by a good several millimeters, uh, so I had to re-drill a couple holes in order to mount the draft tower itself. 
There were a couple sharp edges in here as well for the pre reeled cuts and some of the corners. Um, so just watch out for those if you're not already aware of that. Overall, I'd say I'm pretty happy with the kegerator. Uh, I don't really have that much experience with the companies that make pre-built kegerators outside of New Air, so I can't really do a fair comparison uh, with this product and a different one. So if you have experience with a pre-built kegerator from a different company, um, and it has some different features, pluses, minuses, whatever, drop that in the comment section down below so we can all get a little bit smarter and figure out how to make a good decision for ourselves. So as far as positives and negatives go, um, positives, I really do like the look on this thing. It definitely looks a lot more sleek than my DIY kegerator does. Um, it looks, you know, I like the black color and uh, having a draft tower kind of adds a little bit of an element of class to it. Um, although if you wanted to, you still could run taps through the door as well, if that's your thing. Um, I do like the draft tower a lot though, so I'm probably gonna keep it. Also, I'm definitely a big fan of the fact that it comes with literally everything you need to hook up to a Sankey keg. Um, including the coupler. It's good to be able to plug and play literally on day one. Uh, a lot of times you sometimes need extra equipment or extra parts um, or extra steps required to actually get you to do the thing that you bought the object for. Uh, and this is not the case with this kegerator. Uh, literally all you need to do is go to the store and get your CO2 tank filled. And that's something you have to do anyway because you will never be able to order a filled CO2 canister. Couple other things, I really like that digital temperature display in the front there, it's integrated into the top. Um, that is really nice, quick and easy. It's also very accurate. I checked it with another thermometer and I also checked it with the ink bird that I use to regulate my regular kegerator's temperature. Um, and they were all the same temperature, so that was very good news. Uh, so that's also nice. I also like the fan in the back. That's a feature that I neglected to add to my previous kegerator. Every so often I had to clean up some nastiness on the inside of my kegerator because I spilled something in there and it would not evaporate. But having the humidity control fan inside is a great feature. I also like the fact that you have the ability to run two lines into your kegerator. So if you want to run like an additional CO2 line or an additional nitro line, um, that's very easy to do. I love the fact that it has wheels because this is about 125 pounds it's kind of hard to slide it around if you have to, uh, but having it on wheels makes it much, much easier, much more mobile, um, and that allows me to kind of position it. I uh, like the shape and the size, of course, as well, because it's very easy to tuck into a corner. It's about three quarters of the footprint of my previous kegerator, um, and with the draft tower on top, it's now less likely that uh, you know people are gonna run around and accidentally hit a tap handle open, um, and that has happened before. <laughs> and if there's any spillage, it's gonna collect on top here in the uh, drip tray, as opposed to just ending up on the carpet floor, which is bad. So as far as negatives go, uh, first of all, I'm not going to shy away from it. The price, uh, $1,200 is a very hefty asking price for a single tap kegerator. It does come loaded with a ton of features and it does come loaded with the ability to plug and play in the first round, um, but it is a lot of money. It costs me about the same amount to make my kegerator and then also buy all four kegs. But no matter whether you're building your own kegerator or you're buying a pre-made one, just understand it is a hefty investment no matter what path you take. Uh, the next kind I have is the uh, lack of kind of finishing touches on it. I really shouldn't have seen sharp edges on things. I really should not have seen misaligned screw holes. It wasn't a big deal at the end of the day, but I also didn't pay $1,200 for it. So if you're paying $1,200 for it, I would hope to see more kind of care taken towards where you put your pilot holes and how you send off your finished product. Uh, third thing I'm not a big fan of is the regulator on the CO2 tank. It is first of all awesome that it comes with a regulator in the first place. It works, it does its job very well, but I found the gauge to be a bit finicky and uh, will sometimes deviate plus or minus two or three PSI, uh, depending on whether or not I tap it. Uh, I shouldn't be seeing that, so I'm probably gonna replace it with another regulator at some point in time. That being said, I am using the supplied beer lines right now, and it is pouring a pretty well-balanced pint um, at about eight PSI, and uh, I have no complaints about the actual pour. The lines seem dialed in for those of us who live at sea level. Also additional, one last con here is that this does not come with the homebrew corny keg specific ball lock keg adapters. So um, I had to use my own hardware in order to actually set this up to a corny keg system versus a Sankey keg. Uh, so if you happen to have a Sankey keg or you just go to your beer store and you buy a Sankey keg to serve out of a kegerator, 
um, then you'll be set up fine using this system. But if you want to serve your own homebrew beer and it has a corn to keg ball lock system, you have to use your own keg disconnects, um, which will require some uh, monkeying around with some of the lines just to be sure that you have it all set up properly. So when it comes down to a DIY kegerator, let's talk about mine. I switched to the kegging and built my kegerator all at the same time about two, two and a half years ago, and it was probably one of the best decisions that I actually made in my entire home brewing career. It really did change the quality of my beer for the better, and it made the brewing experience much, much more pleasurable, uh, mainly because I didn't have to clean as many bottles. The nice thing about doing a DIY kegerator, though, is that you can customize every single piece of it. So if you get like a seven cubic foot freezer, you can fit four or five kegs in there. If you get a five or six cubic foot freezer like this one, you can fit three or four kegs in there. You can tailor the size of it to your particular space constraints. You can also customize how many taps you get, what kind of taps you get, uh, what kind of hardware you're using, uh, whether you want to run with duo type fittings or uh, swivel knots and that sort of thing. Uh, you can also customize the look of it. You can customize a whole bunch of different things on it, uh, which is honestly a pretty good thing. The nice thing about it though is that it generally is going to not cost you as much money to do it yourself. However, it's not also a guarantee that it's going to work considering you're doing all of the assembly yourself. There's a couple situations in which I would recommend getting a pre-built kegerator like this one over something that's DIY. Uh, the first is if you value aesthetics very highly. Uh, generally, these, these pre-built ones are gonna have a little bit more design influence in them. They're gonna look a little bit more natural in your, uh, your area that you're serving your beer in, if that happens to be like a main living area uh, instead of a garage or something like that, where you want stuff to look a little bit nicer, then you might wanna go with that. The second situation is if you don't really own the tools that are required to make your own kegerator, or you're not really very good at uh, making stuff yourself, you're not really a DIY person. Um, so in order to make your own kegerator, you're gonna need to make some very precise measurements, some precise cuts, and uh, you're gonna probably wanna do a couple things very, very deliberately with the right tools. You need a drill, you need a couple specialty drill bits, you need uh, a saw, some saw horses, some clamps, measuring tape, um, uh, a couple other pieces of hardware and some caulk. And if you don't already own those items, the costs of that can really add up uh, to exceed that of a pre-made kegerator. All I needed to assemble this was a Phillips head screwdriver, um, although I did use my screw gun and that helped a lot. The third situation in which I'd recommend just getting a pre-built kegerator is that you don't want to go through the DIY process. I get it, not all of us have all that much time uh, to be able to sit down, design out a kegerator system and actually build it. It took me a good solid day to build my own kegerator and it took me even longer to figure out how to design it the way I wanted it to go. And even then I looked, overlooked a whole bunch of stuff like a fan and a potential nitro system and stuff like that. Now flipping that around, if you want to make a DIY system, there's a couple situations in which that makes a lot more sense. The first is if you're trying to save money. Uh, generally you're going to save a little bit of money if you make it yourself versus a pre-built system. Um, secondly is if you want to customize as much as possible. So if you want to throw on Perlick taps, for example, if you want to make your own tap handles, if you want to uh, basically design your own custom 14 keg like ultra maximum bar experience kegerator, um, which you know who you are. Um, <laughs> that's awesome. And DIY is absolutely the way to go uh, for that sort of thing. But just make sure you know what you're doing when you build it. There's plenty of great tutorials out there on how to make your own kegerator. Um, I would suggest the Craft Beer and Brewing Magazine uh, channel's tutorial. Northern Brewers YouTube channel also has a great uh, kegerator tutorial as well. So now we're gonna talk about what the future holds for me in terms of kegs. Now that I have two kegerators, what's gonna happen? Uh, well, truth be told, I'm actually gonna make this one my main kegerator. However, it can only fit three kegs in it right now and it only has a single tap draft tower. So there are some upgrades and modifications that I will be making to this kegerator, uh, which honestly will not be that difficult. So first of all, I've ordered a four tap draft tower to go on top of this. That's gonna be a really nice addition. It'll allow me to run four beer lines down I'm gonna set up a four-way distributor on the inside, and then I'm going to expand the uh, front of this kegerator with a collar. So I already have a collar on my upright keyser. That's that piece of wood that runs around the top and the taps are drilled through. 
Um, I'm going to take that concept and instead of running taps through it, I'm just going to use it to expand the uh, depth of this kegerator here. So I'm just going to take the door off and run 2x6 around the uh, complete perimeter of the door and then I'm just going to reattach it um, so I have expanded capacity to fit four kegs in here. Um, and I only need to expand it by about six inches or so and then we should be able to fit four kegs without a problem. That's gonna result in a bit more compact of a kegerator and serving space, which is always a good thing in my opinion. So as far as my old keyser goes, I mean, I don't really have space for two of these things in my apartment. That's a little ridiculous. So I'm either gonna get rid of it or turn it into a fermentation chamber, um, but I already have pretty good temperature control on my beers, so I'm probably just gonna get rid of it. Um, I don't really need to have that much crap sitting around. So if you are interested in buying this particular kegerator, um, I have a link in the description box and you can get 10% off of this order and save $120 by using code ABREWER10 at checkout. So check that link out in the description box, uh, but make sure you're doing your research, make sure you know what you're getting, um, and make sure that it is the right thing for you. And for that reason, I hope this video was helpful to you. Uh, so let me know down in the comments section if you've ever gotten a pre-built keg grader and was it worth it for you and does it make sense? As always, if you want to support the channel, please check out the t-shirt store. You can get this awesome t-shirt as well as many others, and it's a great way to support the channel. I also have a Patreon linked in the description box, and a big thank you to my Patreon supporters because you guys are awesome and you guys run this channel. I also have an Amazon store listed in the description box where you can see all of the equipment that I thoroughly recommend that's available on Amazon, uh, things that I've used before and really do kind of stand behind. So check that out if you were looking for equipment. I'm also on Instagram as The Apartment Brewer, uh, where you can check out some more frequent content updates and stuff like that if that's your thing. Either way, thank you for watching all the way to the end, and if you're still here, big shout out, big thank you to you. So, until the next one, cheers.